Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, uh, today we got back to working on a cane mill restoration that we started on a while back. I uh, did a previous video on uh, welding up and returning the journals on uh, these, these three ro rollers back here. This is a cane mill. There's three rollers that basically you take sugar cane, run through, it crushes the cane, and lets the juice come out. And uh, from that, you could boil it down to make syrup. You can boil it down to make sugar, whatever. Uh, this is an old antique uh, cane mill from probably the late 1800s uh, that we are working on today. And like I said, we've already got our journals all turned and freshened back up. They were in very bad shape, but we got those looking pretty good. Today's job is going to be pouring the Babbitt bearings for this. So I always uh, mention when I talk about Babbitt bearings, because I know a lot of people may not be familiar with what Babbitt is, but in the days before ball bearings, pretty much pre-1920s, 30s, somewhere along in there. Uh, yes, ball bearings were around before then, but they weren't very commonplace really until uh, after the Great Depression and uh, the U.S. and the rest of the world was gearing up for a World War II production was really when the kind of the big conversion to ball bearings took place. Yes, they occurred beforehand, but before the 1920s and 30s, almost all your bearings were uh, plain bearings or just friction bearings. Uh, and one of the types of bearings that was used was a material called Babbitt. Babbitt is a uh, tin lead alloy that uh, is fairly soft. And what you would do is you would take a, a, a block like this, your journal would run in it. This would come on there, you'd have oil, and you'd have that softer material between the cast iron or steel and the shaft. And that way the wear would take place in that softer material rather than wearing down the shafts and so forth. Uh, this cane mill had Babbitt bearings in it. When I got it, they're in very poor shape. We're gonna totally replace all these and make them match and fit uh, the new journals that we've got cut. So first thing I want to do is uh, we need to remove the old Babbitt from these bearing blocks. And uh, to do that, we're just going to melt it out. Babbitt belt melts at a fairly low temperature, around seven, 800 degrees, uh, compared to the iron or steel that is a low temperature. And we're going to melt this stuff out and then get ready to put new Babbitt liners in here. And we'll cast those in place. Let's get in here and do it. There's three rollers on this. Each roller has two bearings. Uh, the bearing, because of the way the pressure is, it really only pushes on one side. So it's not, don't, don't have the Babbitt material on both sides like you do in many applications. It's only going to be on one side, uh, the, basically the side that the pressure is going against. These are the bearing caps. And uh, the, you can see the Babbitt in here. This one is actually completely worn out and into the cast iron. This one here looks like it... Uh, got hot and melted out partially. I'm not sure what happened there. Maybe the whole bearing just kind of slipped down. Uh, but we're going to melt all this stuff out. These uh, are little cups and they have the bearing liner on one half. We will uh, melt all this old Babbitt out and get ready to pour new. So to do that, I've just got a ladle here. I'm just going to put my block in there. We're going to take the torch over here, heat it up, melt it out. These are the journals uh, that we're going to be uh, pouring to. I'm just going to move those out of the way for right now. Let's get our torch set up and we'll start melting some Babbitt. This Babbitt will melt at a fairly low temperature. You can use a propane torch or a MAP torch like this to melt it out, but um, I'm going to use my oxyacetylene torch. I've got, got it. Uh, we've got a rosebud set up here, so we're just going to fire it up. This will go a lot faster uh, than using the propane. Let me move that out of the way. And we'll just come in here. This won't take very long. Get it warmed up, and that Babbitt will just start pouring out. You can see it kind of puddling out right now. It doesn't take much at all. And we'll just uh, melt this out. And we'll be ready to pour some new stuff back in there in a bit. I'm just using a ladle to catch this. Uh, this is my pouring label. I'll melt my Babbitt in this and use it to pour my Babbitt later on. Um, generally speaking, uh, whenever I'm pouring Babbitt, I will uh, use new material. I, I won't have enough of this old material to do the whole job. and I. I prefer using Babbitt of a known source uh, because there are a bunch of different alloys, slightly different alloys out there. And uh, I just I just don't like mixing it. Some people will. I, I just don't like doing it. That one's done. Get our next barren piece put in here. Same thing. 
there you go you see the process we're just going to get all this melted out and uh, we'll be back in a little bit I think we have all of our Babbitt melted out here and uh, there's what's left in there. The stuff floating on the top is just kind of trash and um, I can take a little wooden stick or something and kind of clean that out. And I'm just going to dump it here on the table. All right. Like I said, if I wanted to reuse that, I could. I'm probably just going to use new fresh material, though, that I know what it is. We'll uh, let that cool down, and uh, we'll be ready to go here in a little bit. All right, so I think we're ready to set up to pour the bearings. And um, a lot of times when I'm pouring bearings, I will actually use the shaft that we're going to pour. That's going to be the... Uh, the, the, the bearing's going to run against, we'll use that as our mold uh, to actually cast it to. So this bearing will go in there about like this right here. But because of clearance behind this thing and so forth, and plus for my next operation, I was going to have to build a mandrel anyway. What I decided to do is I'm going to do a pouring mandrel for this. And basically all this is is a piece of steel. I've turned it down to the exact same diameter as my journals. Now on these, uh, these cane rollers, uh, I went and made sure that all of my shafts were exactly the same size. So, And the nice thing about Babbitt bearings is, is the, the measurements really don't matter. It will conform to whatever it is. Um, so basically all I did is I just I, I took my smallest diameter and went after they cleaned up and I turned everything else to that diameter. And then I turned a mandrel here that matches that diameter. And this is basically going to be uh, what I use as a uh, pattern basically to, to mold or to cast that bearing to. And then when we take them off of here, they'll, they should fit right on uh, this shaft here. Um, we could have used this, but I'm going to do it this way again, mainly because of the next step, because the next step had been really difficult to use the actual roller. So I've got this uh, shaft set up over here. I just got sitting up on a couple of uh, V blocks. And what I'm going to do is come in here and we'll just uh, kind of position our... Um, our rollers up underneath this. Now because one side is tapered, I've got a piece of metal in here kind of picking it up. This is there's nothing real precision about this. These bearings can be as thick or thin as you want. You got plenty of adjustment. But one end needs to be picked up. So uh, again, just put a little shim up underneath here. I'm going to use a little piece of wood and I've eyeballed it. That's pretty level across there. Uh, it's level enough. And we'll position these so I'll basically have an equal amount on each side uh, that is, um, you know, for, for spacing on each side. Now, we're gonna actually pour the metal in here, but of course right now, if we were just come over here and pour it, the metal's just gonna roll everywhere because there's, there's open gaps. So we gotta fill all that in. And to do that, we're gonna be using this uh, product here called Deacon Mold, or Deacon Pack. Deacon Mold Pack, I guess is what it's called. This is a, uh, a heat, uh, resistant material. I used to use a product called Babbitt Right, which I really, really like, but unfortunately you can't get it anymore. It's a damming material for, for pouring Babbitt bearings, but this is kind of a, a replacement. Honestly, I've never used it. Uh, this stuff is kind of the consistency of Play-Doh. It does have some fiber in there. No, it is not asbestos. I always get asked that question. You know, the um, the old original Babbitt Wright did have asbestos in it. From what I'm told, the the stuff that they made in, in the last 20, 30 years, 40 years, however long, it did not. But some of the real old Babbitt Wright material uh, could have had uh, uh, asbestos in it back in the day. So what we're gonna do here is, uh, I'm just gonna get a little piece about like that and I'm just going to roll a little roll here and we will use this as kind of a gasket uh, between there and also to kind of fill in the space and um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of roll this in here like such. I'm going to roll it all the way around the shaft just kind of help hold it in place and we'll just 
kind of press this into it and that should form a nice dam in there that the babbit should not pour around and let me get everything positioned back like we want it that looks good and we'll put some damming material on either side as well so we'll just come in here like such Again, I'm just going to kind of wrap it around the shaft. It doesn't need to be on top, but just kind of helps it hang on there. And we'll just kind of press that in there and it will just kind of conform to everything. And hopefully we get a nice tight seal and uh, no, no Babbitt's going to pour out when we uh, go over here and do this. So, all right, I need another piece on the other end to dam it. All right, and my spacing looks good. And you know what, guys? I'm just gonna, I'm gonna kind of use some more of this to kind of position everything into place. Um, I got plenty of it, and it'll just make sure that those pieces don't go rolling around uh, on us. Kind of position these in place, hold everything where it needs to be where it doesn't move around. Guys, I'm just gonna do both of these bearings at one time. You know, I could do them individually. I got enough shaft there, no big deal. We're just gonna, it'll be two separate pours. They'll be divided between them, but it's gonna be a lot easier just to do this one in one operation. So that's kind of my game plan. All right, I think I like that. This is a, equal spacing on both sides we got fairly even around it so uh, let's get our babbit ready and we'll heat that up and do a pour so we've got our babbit melting over here in the ladle up on a camp stove that's just what i use and again we put some fresh babbit in there that was some stuff that i ordered from uh i think master car it's fairly expensive but uh again i, I like using fresh babbit when i do a pour so uh, what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and put a preheat on all of this stuff down here. We don't wanna pour it cold. We wanna have some heat in it. We'll probably want it to be about four or 500 degrees. So I'm just gonna use a torch uh, to do that. And we'll just uh, put that heat in there. Make sure everything looks good. Uh, I'm going to come over here and just skim any dross that comes to the top of this ladle. Any uh, trash or impurities in there will float on top of the, the molten metal. So we'll just pull that stuff off. And uh, a good way to tell if your babbit is at temperature is if you put that in there and it comes out charred, we are at pouring temperature. So we will just come over here with the ladle. And I'm just gonna come right here and pour it in there until it fills up. And that was a messy pour, but we got it. Do the other side. And we'll let that cool down. This uh, babbit that spilled on the table, no problem. It just pulls right back up and we'll remelt it. And that is probably nice and hard. So we'll go ahead and pull it out of the mold here. Didn't leak any, that's good. looks good and I think these are both acceptable pours we'll have to clean this up get all the excess off but uh, I think it'll be fine 
All right, first pour down. Now to clean this thing up, I just uh, put it over in a vise and I just use a horseshoer's rasp. Uh, this uh, babbit is fairly soft. It'll file away really quickly. In fact, you can even use really coarse side to rough it down pretty quick. Get that a little bit tighter. All right, that's got the top cleaned up. Turned up on its end and just you know, not a whole lot sticking out there, but we'll knock it back, make it flush with the casting. Same thing on this side. You know, these bearings don't have to be super pretty. They just have to work. You know, if I really wanted to be fancy, I could have made a piece of metal that sandwiched up there on the corner of that dam so we had a nice smooth uh, piece there on, the, on that edge. But again, it's, it's just not gonna matter. These things uh, need to be functional and not necessarily pretty. You're not gonna see them anyway. So uh, that barren is uh, cleaned up and ready to go. These two bearings uh, will go right here. And uh, they fit just right. Um, they're gonna work just perfect. So up next, we got the cups that go down in the bottom. So it'll go on the bottom of this roller, which is this side. That's still hot, yeah. Um, and the way this one works is that the roller sits down in this piece here. It presses on one side uh, and it needs to conform to that radius. The uh, other side of the bearing doesn't have any babbit. So only half of it gets babbited. But because of the way that we can't really come in from the top and pour these, we're gonna have to pour them straight up and down. So I need to modify my mandrel and uh, we're gonna put a liner in here to keep the babbit from going around the backside. So let me get that ready and uh, we'll be back in a minute and get these poured. So the next bearing again is this cup. This goes in the bottom. And what I did was I took my mandrel and I cut it off and I just welded a little piece onto it. And this is gonna allow me to drop this over in here, put this in a vise to kind of hold it in place and I can pour the babbit around it down here. That's the game plan. Uh, but like I mentioned before, if you look in here, this half down here that's kind of wider, this is the only half that babbit gets poured in. This half back here, is empty. Again, we were only pouring half of a shell because there's only pressure on one side of this roller. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna kind of line this whole backside with the uh, Deacon mold pack and that will keep the babbit from pouring back in there. We'll let it kind of fill in in the bottom. I want a little bit in the bottom because we're gonna have some weight going down and I want a little bit of bearing pressure, pressure in the bottom. bottom. So here's the uh, stuff we just used. The stuff is reusable for a while anyway. It will eventually get to where uh, you... Well, in typical fashion, my battery went dead in my microphone right here. So I'm going to do a quick little voiceover and kind of tell you what's going on. But I was just saying that you can reuse this uh, material here, this Deacon mold, over and over and over again. You just, uh, just keep on reusing it until it gets too hard you can use. Taking a little piece of metal here, like a rolling pin, and kind of rolling that out flat, getting it to a uniform thickness. Taking a piece of wood there, kind of cutting a flat bottom on one side, also making a square cut. Uh, which become the side and from there I'm going to take it over and put it into the piece and right now I'm just kind of measuring where that other side is and we'll go ahead and cut that square as well once that's done uh, we'll take that whole piece that little flat piece there and kind of place it in there where it needs to be this will become the spacer between my metal piece and the back side there and keep that babbit from pouring over in there I'm just taking a stick there and cutting that off um, you know once we get this thing just like we want it we're going to take our piece of metal and stick it down in there I note my uh, little tack weld broke off but I found out real quickly that it was going to hold it up just fine without having that 
piece of metal on there, uh, which worked out really well for me. Here we're just kind of heating everything up, getting it up to temperature, getting it ready for a pour. Again, just putting that preheat in there. My Babbitt's melting over on the stove, and we will bring this over and do another pour. So we'll just pour it in there into that open area. Note the Babbitt does not go back there in the back. And uh, this turned out to be a really, really nice pour. It uh, turned out just perfect. All right, we're down to one last bearing. Uh, the Actually, I've already done one off camera, but these two bearings fit the uh, larger shaft for the larger roller. And I made a mandrel. Uh, again, just turned it down to that diameter. Uh, note here, they didn't clean up on one side of this, but the other side of this is cleaned up fine. So I got a good, good area there to do it. Like I said, I've already done one of the bearings. This is the... Um, top bearing and we'll just kind of fish it up underneath here and it's going to be just about right sitting on the flange in the front and we'll get some of our molding putty here damming material and uh, I'm just gonna take a little bit and kind of jack that front end up this putty is really good for positioning your parts and kind of getting them where they need to be and they'll just kind of stay right there. So, uh, so it needs to be up a little bit higher. That's pretty good right there. I'm gonna just kind of put a little bit on the sides here. That'll kind of stick down to my table and kind of help hold it in place. Now we will, see it needs to come this way just a little bit, there we go. And now we'll dam the front and the back where no material can come out. This is the first time, like I said a while ago, first time I've used this Deacon mold pack and I like it. it uh, it's doing a really good job. I've always used Babbitt right in the past. Can't get it anymore like we talked about before. And uh, this Deacon mold pack really does a good job. It's a good substitute for that uh, uh, Babbitt right. So, and I can't remember where I ordered it from. I found it online. DeaconIndustries.com is uh, the company that makes it. I can't remember if I ordered it from them or I may have got it off of Amazon. I don't remember. But it's kind of expensive. You have to get a 10 pound container, which is a lot more than you need. <laughs> but over time, I'll go through it comes in that nice plastic tub which uh, will seal up should help keep it fresh uh, keep it from drying out between times when I put this in there you know I just kind of make sure I got a good seal I don't want any of that Babbitt to leak out uh, I have poured bearings before where I didn't have a good seal and Babbitt just kind of goes all over the, the table and uh, Got to reset everything up and do it all over again. Never fun, but uh, I think we're good. I'm gonna kind of concentrate my flame on that shaft here because that's where the biggest heat sink is. I'm getting heat down on that shell below it too, that bearing shell. But I want to make sure we get a good, nice pour here. Go ahead and hit down there on either side of that while I'm at it. We'll just soak in some good heat here. Probably got enough heat in our part. Let me skim this Babbitt real quick. Hope I got enough Babbitt here left to do this. Getting down to the very end. Uh, froze a little bit. Normally what you like to do is see it pop up on the other side. It didn't quite come around. It, it froze in there, but I think we'll be fine. I'm going to turn my stove off. It doesn't take very long for this Babbitt to uh, set up either. I can go ahead and pull my damming material out and I'll go ahead and 
grab a hammer here and we'll just knock that one off. There we go. Nice pour. That's going to be just fine. Um, we'll let that cool down and I'll clean it up. I'm going to put my Deacon mold back up in my pot over there. We'll save this, uh, reuse it on the next job. I basically, this is what I pulled out to begin with, and I've been using the same one on all six of these bearings so far, and I've still got plenty of life left in it. We'll uh, put it back up. And there we go. Babbitt bearings are poured. Let's see. Uh, these on the small rollers, I mean, these things are just, they're perfect. Um, they, they're not even going to require any scraping. The two up here are just a little bit on the tight side. This one's not too bad on the bottom one, but I'm going to have to do a little scraping on this one to get it to fit the shaft just right. No big deal at all. We'll get it where it spins nice and free. But uh, these are all ready to, to go back in, and I'm very happy with how all these turned out. Uh, they're going to be just fine. Um, you know, one thing with Ford and Babbitt is you get sometimes you're going to get uh, some little pockets in there, little wrinkles and whatever. It's not a big deal. It's basically just an oil groove. It's a place, a lot, a lot of bat, bat bearings you actually will cut oil grooves out in them. These did not have oil grooves cut in them, so I'm not going to do it. Uh, but it just gives a place for the oil to go. It's not a big deal at all. These worked out just fine. We got Babbitt on half the shell. The other half is not, just like the originals. And uh, anyway, I think that these are pretty much ready to go back together. I'm gonna probably do another video, I'll be putting that cane mill back together. And, uh, you know, so you can see how it all goes back together. We'll do that in another video though. I've got another little thing I gotta do that's a little bit unique to this mill. It's actually a modification that was done previously and we're gonna keep that modification. I gotta do some stuff along those lines and that's gonna be in an upcoming video as well. But there you go, pouring some Babbitt Barons. And with that, I think we got our Babbitt bearing pouring done for today. Um, I get asked a lot by a lot of people, got a lot of questions on Babbitt bearings and a lot of people are intimidated by it and scared to go out and try it. Guys, I would just say, this is pretty low tech. I mean, let's face it, these are not precision bearings. These are, they, they work great, don't get me wrong. Uh, in the right application, in some ways, they can even be better than ball bearings. Uh, in some, some ways, not in all ways. Uh, but as far as doing this, you see, that, you see how I do it. It, 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 it. It's not hard. If you got a job to do, go do it. And uh, the nice thing about Babbitt Barons is, is that if you screw up, and you, you, you just melt it out and you start over again. My first Babbitt bearings I poured, I probably screwed up the first two or three. I did not have the benefit of YouTube to go watch and see how to do it. I was figuring it out as I went back in, this is 20, 30 years ago. But um, it's, it's really not that difficult. Just go out there and try it. Uh, if, if, if you fail, just again, melt it out, start over keep doing it until you get it right. That's how I learned how to do it. And uh, that's how most people learn how to do it through trial and error. So uh, give it a try if you got some bear support. With that, guys, that will be a wrap. As always, thanks for watching. Please do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thumbs up and comments are appreciated. Uh, and hit that bell icon up there and subscribe if you haven't already so that you can find out when new videos are posted. And with that, guys, again, we'll catch you on the next video. And thanks for watching.